What's up internet? Today we're going to take the 22 Gen 3 Hayabusa and switch the shift pattern from the standard shift pattern, which is one down, five up, to the GP or race shift patterns, what I like to call it, and that is uh, just the opposite. It's one up and then five down. Uh, there was another video, uh, I think I was working on the Jixer, the 600, and I was talking about the different shift patterns and uh, why you would want a GP or race shift pattern versus a standard shift pattern. Um, and somebody commented, hey, I wonder if I could do that on my Busa. I said, hey, I know somebody's got a Busa. Let's try it and see. I'll make a video. Let's do this. So thank you for uh, who that was that commented. And let's get to work. So one thing that is of concern, and we'll figure out here in a second if this is going to work, is a clearance. So you can see that um, the shift linkage is really close to the countershaft sprocket cover. And so what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this bolt. We're actually going to take the bolt out. We're gonna pull this off, flip it up, put it back on. So basically this part of the linkage is going to be up here. And so I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough clearance to do that. The other thing I wanna make sure is, if you notice right now we're in a standard pattern. So if we go up to grab a gear, the shift linkage is moving forward. Um, I wanna note that because I've never done this with a quick shifter. And so I'm not sure if the direction of motion um, has an effect on the quick shifter's behavior because as we go down, it'll do the auto blipping for us and um, downshifting, we're going this way. So I wanna pay attention to that. Um, assuming we do have the clearance we need when we flip this up, um, we just wanna check and make sure that when we're now moving the shifter down, that the quick shifter linkage is still moving in the same direction as it does now. So that would be towards the front of the motorcycle. Really don't have any room in here for a ratchet. So I've got a uh, wrench, but it's a ratcheting wrench. So we're just gonna loosen this guy up, take this bolt off and flip our linkage around. Hopefully we have enough clearance. Otherwise, if we don't, what I thought was gonna be a super short video might end up being a longer video or maybe not a video at all. And there's our bolt. So we're, we're just gonna pull this off and we're going to raise this up. And yeah, that's a problem. So again, just for the camera, to reverse the shift pattern, you just go from like so to like so. But the problem we're having is the countershaft sprocket is actually kind of in the way. Uh, so one thing you're gonna wanna do before you um, do what I just did is take a measurement of the height of your shift lever, right? Take some like measuring tape tool, lock it into position, and that way when you put your shifter back on, you can get it at the right height. So it will feel the same as it did before you, you made any changes. The other thing that is interesting is you don't have a lot of slack in the quick shifter cable here, the electronics. Um, so what are you gonna do here? We've got the side fairing loose and we should have enough clearance to pull the sprocket cover off. Got one bolt here, it looks like one bolt right there. Um, and that, with the sprocket cover off, that should give us enough clearance for this knuckle right here on the shifter. Um, my only concern is we're going to be shifting down now to go up a gear and our quick shifter module here is going in the opposite direction. It's going backwards instead of forward. So now we can pull this guy off and we'll pull this cover off. In order to loosen up the side fairing, this piece here is just attached with like Velcro. There's one bolt here, a push pin right back here. 
I just took that out because A, it's easy and it gives this top piece a little bit more flexibility. And then this grommet right here fits over this bolt. Um, you don't actually need to take that bolt out. You can actually just lift this up enough to clear that and it comes off. And then we took this bolt out and one bolt down here. So one, two, three bolts and a push pin up there comes off pretty quick and easy or not off, but you, we've got enough clearance now that we're good. Since I forgot to take a measurement uh, before I took the shifter off, I'm actually just gonna sit on the bike and feel the shifter as far as its height right now and try and just make sure that that's where it was um, before I took it off. I'm ultra sensitive to my shift lever and my brake pedal heights, mainly because of some injuries that I have. And uh, I just wanna make sure I get it set correctly. So don't forget to, you know, if you're very picky about your height, Take that measurement and then um, you'll know where to set it at and it should feel exactly the same as it did before you did, you know, made any changes. So we're gonna do that real quick. Lower than it was before. So I'm gonna move it up one more notch, which is uh, as simple as pulling this off, twist it one more notch, put it back on. I'm not sure if I actually even moved it that time. Let's see. Yeah, I think, I think that's good. So we're gonna put the bolt in, bolt the fairing back up. Hopefully it stopped raining. We can go for a ride. We'd be getting tons of rain. All right, welcome to the road test portion of this video. I forgot my gloves. They weren't, I usually keep them in my helmet and uh, picked up my helmet. They weren't in there. So I have to go find my gloves after this, but um, as you can see, it looks pretty miserable. We're surrounded by clouds. It's been raining for days. I was not about to waste any more time. I wanted to take advantage of this uh, quick opportunity. We're just doing a real quick test of the quick shifter, make sure it functions. The bike is in. Well, the bike's still got its turn signal on. How dare you? Um, the bike's in GP or race shift mode, whichever name you prefer GP I guess sounds cooler but so we're coming up to a traffic light we'll test the downshifts and make sure the auto blipper still functions and I'll try and do a quick capture with my helmet so you can see I'm actually shifting down so we're in fourth gear there's a oh god dang it other way gotta go up <laughs> all right well you got to see it work for second all right that was a fail so there you go we went from second to third with the quick shifter i haven't used race shift in a long long time gp shift so i'm already like forgetting so take your time if you do this transition if you never ran it before um, take your time with it go out and practice and just get used to doing literally the opposite thing Okay, so uh, again with my turn signal, here we go. We're gonna downshift, meaning I'm gonna go up with the gear shifter. We're in third, I'm gonna get off the gas. We're trying to get a picture. Oh, you hear that? We're in second. So I would say the auto blipper works pretty good. Let's go the other way. I, I think we can call this a, a little bit, let me try it again. We can call this a success. So, you know, it took about 10 minutes. It's usually like literally like a couple of minutes because all you got to do is flip the linkage around like we did. But on the Busa, you don't have the clearance for the little knuckle on the end of the linkage. It hits the sprocket cover, so you got to remove your sprocket cover. And in order to remove the sprocket cover, you got to pull a couple of bolts off your side ferry just to make room to get to the cover and, and pull it off the bike so it wasn't too bad i'd say the whole experience was like 10 minutes maybe um this is just kind of like my two cents on race or gp shift versus the standard shift pattern right um there's not really a lot of ut 
utility in it on the street. I ran GP shift or race shift on my GSX-R600 in the late 90s and early 2000s when I was doing um, CCS Mid-Atlantic Racing uh, back in Virginia. And the reason, the utility, and there's, ah, man, I'm already going the wrong way. Uh, there's, a, there's an article on Cycle World, I'll try and link it in the description, maybe put it on the screen, but uh, it highlights the, the purpose of the utility of GP shift versus race shift, and it really comes down to, if you can imagine on a track that has a left-hander with a long sweeping exit, you're like, you're leaned over, right? And you're throttling out and slowly accelerating because you're on the edge or the shoulder of the tire. Um, if you need to grab a gear while you're leaned over, um, that could be kind of hazardous because you need to put your foot underneath the shifter. So your foot is going to be really close to the ground. Um, so that, that, that can just, that's just a, a bad situation. So GP shift, you're putting your foot on top of the shifter. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about scraping the ground with your foot while it's underneath the shifter and that left hand sweep exit kind of scenario so that's why i did it uh, i think that's why pretty much all the racers do it on the street and i guess it's just a preference thing one thing i would encourage everybody to do if you have more than one motorcycle man convert them all man because like switching from one bike um, to the other and, and back and forth and, and one bike in standard shift pattern and the other one in GP shift pattern or race shift pattern yeah, that, that's just asking for a problem especially if you are kind of like if you're just cruising around town it might not be a big deal to shift one gear in the wrong direction but if you're like damn it with the turn signal again if you're like um, you know getting a little sporty with it on the street um, and you're anywhere near like 10,000 RPM shifting in the wrong direction Even if it's just one gear that could be really bad. That could be disastrous so um, I'm just doing laps around rock ribbon right now So what was I gonna say yeah, just uh, just don't do that man make life easy keep it stupid simple the kiss rule applies here if you got multiple bikes put them all in the same shift pattern whatever shift pattern that is and i'm gonna end this video here you guys <coughs> i opened the visor and i started choking on my own saliva what the hell okay i could just record this whole thing again but i'm not gonna i'm a busy dude i got shit to do you know what to do. Keep it rubber side down. We'll we'll see you in the next video. Okay, I'm going too fast to have my visor up. My eyes are getting all watery. Bye.